Welcome to the show. Where we talk about everything, everywhere, with anyone, at any time, with you. Why is Bali the digital nomad hub? Yeah. And I've been living, well, we've been living here for a year and a half now, and we are somewhat digital nomads. And we run a big community here of digital nomads. When I decided to make this video about this topic, I actually was a little bit confused. Why is Bali the digital nomad hub? Yeah. Like, Because when we came here, it was actually quite empty. Yeah. We came here in the January of 2022. Mm -hmm. It was actually before the borders were open. And、um, yeah, now Bali has become a totally different thing. Yeah. Back then it was so quiet. Now it is extremely active, right? On the roads, in the cafes, restaurants, and bars, and whatever. You,、yeah. you name it, right? I think Bali has always been popular, but I think the reasons change. Yeah, it, it still ponders me like, why actually is Bali so popular? And why is it the digital nomad hotspot? Because, yeah, there's good Wi Fi, there's good cafes, the community is great, the food is good, people are kind, there's nice things、yeah. to see. But, I mean, a lot of other countries have that as well. well the thing is, we, don't, we cannot pinpoint to one point. Yeah. That's why we were like, okay, ChatGPT is pretty popular. So, we, how about we ask ChatGPT and see what that machine tells us? Yeah. And、uh, yeah, here's the answer that we got. So, number one is affordable cost of living. Yeah. What do you think about that? Well, in the beginning, it was pretty cost effective. But I don't think we can really, or I don't think we really have a say because we came during、yeah. the end of COVID. Yeah. So we still had like what they call here is like COVID prices. Yeah. We were just trying to make do with what they had. Yeah.、Um, but I do know that there's been a very big rise of prices.、Uh, we experienced that, no? Yeah. Yeah. So back in the day, when we just arrived here, we lived in a hotel for three months.、Mm -hmm. And back then, the price. Per month was four mil.、Mm -hmm. And literally, immediately after the borders were open, it was the price jumped from four mil per month to 22 mil per month <laughs> just overnight. And <laughs> we saw that over,、uh, you know, like firsthand. Yeah. And now we basically、uh, we're not the resort goers and we're not the tourists. So, you know, we're living a pretty nice、um, average or regular、uh, apartment here. Yeah.、Right? So, Point number one affordable cost of living. I would say just so so. It ain't very cheap. Yeah. And you gotta really search and look for the deals if you wanna call it affordable living. And you need to know where to find. Yeah. Because you need to go to the local areas. Once somebody, you know, something is offered by a foreigner, you know, foreign business owners here, then the price is very likely to be、uh, up. Yeah.、Um, Yeah, so if you want to cut down your cost, then you need to do the work. As simple as that. And、uh, number two of what ChatGPT said is the infrastructure and connectivity. It says, like, Bali has seen significant improvements in its infrastructure and digital connectivity over the years. Many co working spaces, cafes, and accommodations offer high speed internet access,、mm -hmm. yeah. uh, which is crucial, crucial <coughs> for digital nomads who rely on stable internet connection to work remotely. Um,、yes. Not all digital nomads rely on reliable internet. I code every day, but the thing is, I don't need reliable internet. Young plays poker, he needs very stable internet connection.、Yeah. Or somebody is having an online meeting,、yeah. they need it.、Yeah. But for a lot of people, they actually don't, they need decent internet speed.、Yeah. But stable. It's different, it's not all.、Know. It's not、yeah. all. But also, I mean, I won't know because we've never really been digital nomads in other countries. Yeah. But I had、um, friends, Amy and Anson. Yeah. We had a friend. Yeah, yeah.、Um, anyway, so they, they came and they said they just came here from Mexico and they were quite shocked at the internet speed at the co working space.、Um, they were just like, the internet is not good. And like, yeah. The, and the internet says, like, if you do research, that Bali has like high speed internet. Connection everywhere, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But they said, like, actually, it was better in Mexico. So I think <coughs> it's a yes and it's a no. Like, we've often experienced some trouble. Like, we go to a cafe and all of a sudden the electricity just turns off, and、hmm. then an hour later it comes back on. So it's like、yeah. you're kind of forced to take a break, which is nice. Yeah. But、um, 
it's definitely not like some high tech, really fast internet wherever you go. I mean, the de the internet here is decent. Yeah. So, um, we're not trying to say it's so bad here, but maybe in comparison to some other places people go to, the internet is so so. But if for most people, I would say 90 to 95 percent of the people, it, like I said, if you are not you know really rely on absolute stable internet, then body is pretty okay. Oh yeah. You know. Yeah. I mean, we we only have some troubles like if we're trying to upload a video or yeah. I don't know, like kind of watch a Netflix show or something. Yeah. If you know, and it happens a bunch of times in Bali that the internet just drops for mm -hmm. hours, but only once or twice. In my, uh, in my own experience. So, you know, it's not that bad. Okay, and number three, a welcoming community. Bali has a vibrant and welcoming community of digital nomads. It, is, it has become the gathering spot for individuals with various backgrounds, industries, and nationalities. That, I would say, is true. <laughs> It is very true. Yeah. yeah. Well, <coughs> as I mentioned before, we actually run our own community here. Um, so Nomeo.io. There yeah. we go. You can <laughs> put it there on the screen. Um, so yeah, I do think that this is very true. Yeah. Um, I think Bali is a hub for tourists, people on a break, people on the eat, pray, love journey. You know, it's not always digital nomads. Um, I feel like the community of people here are very welcoming and there is a very wide variety of people. Um, you got your hippies, you got your surfers, you got your weirdos, yeah. you got your cool guys, I don't know, a bit of everything. And everyone is actually just a lovely person. And I've heard from people who have come to Bali for like a, a short trip and go back to Thailand or Vietnam. Um, those people basically do a circle and loop back to Bali because they said the community was just too good. Yeah, I mean, like, I feel we still need to do some more research. Maybe we'll share with you in the future episodes. But I feel, yeah, like Thailand is great. I really like Thailand. We went there. Yeah, I love it. Um, but so many people, when we chat, they are saying that they went to Thailand um, for a while, and it's really hard for them to meet people. And I was like, how even? You know, because the first time I heard that, I was like, okay, maybe you are introverted. And then the next time I heard it, I was like, okay, no. I heard it before. And then I heard it again and again and again. I don't know. Maybe it's just because Thailand is so big and then there's no single spot that for people to kind of uh, come in and just live comfortably, maybe can surf or whatever, enjoy the weather and connect with each other. Yeah. So I totally agree with what ChatGPT said here. Um, yeah. The welcoming community, it is 100% accurate. Okay, and number four is the natural beauty and lifestyle. Bali's stunning landscapes, tropical climate, and vibrant culture make it an attractive place to live and work. The, islands off the island offers a laid-back lifestyle. Yeah. Laid-back lifestyle. With a variety of recreational activities, wellness practice practices, and a strong focus on personal development. I don't feel like, okay, anyways. No, personal development, like business coaches, life coaches yeah. and stuff. So natural beauty you know? and lifestyle, they've actually really just split these two and smushed them together because like natural yeah. beauty, yeah, the beaches are great, far out, like the forests and the roads and the rice yeah. fields, like it is beautiful. I cannot take that away. But now they've also just shoved in here like recreational activities, which are like obviously gyms and stuff like that, um, yoga, etc. It is true. First of all, like we actually had so many conversations with people, but like uh, basically the question is why Bali? Why Bali? Mm -hmm. Right? The similar answers showed up all the time. It's basically like Bali. If you look on the map, it's actually really small. However, if you live in Bali, it's really big, right? Like you know, you go up, takes two There's hours, so much to do and as then well. you, if you go to the east, uh, I don't know, like four hours, like on the scooter ride. And then in the middle, the you know basically the uh, the area surrounding Ubud, it's so big. And then every single area, they have their own different vibe. They have their own different culture. If you are living in one area and you want to have a uh, weekend getaway, you can go up the mountains. Pretty cold. You can go to another fantastic beach, and then you can just enjoy the you know coastal lifestyle for a couple of days. And then you can go up west. There's just so many varieties to do, yeah. and then um, 
that's why Bali really stood out mm-hmm. and, all, and also the religion of this place too and the local culture because it's very tolerant and that is why I feel that a lot of people get attracted to here yeah. they feel like they can do whatever they want but you know it's been rude and stuff so that's why even these days we have a lot of controversies yeah, right? yeah. which we will talk about in the next video yeah <laughs> And point number five is the co-working spaces and the nomad friendly infrastructure. And it says here that Bali has numerous co-working spaces that cater especially for digital nomads, uh, comfortable work rooms, meeting rooms, networking events, workshops, blah, 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 <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, in Chenggu, there's a lot of co-working spaces or, yeah. I mean, there's not tons. It's not like everywhere you look, there's one. Yeah. But I do see a lot of the questions sometimes is co-working spaces in Ubud and Uluwatu. Yeah. Um, but I think maybe those areas are just growing now. I, I mean, I somewhat agree. Like the, the last three points, I agree with them. Welcoming community, natural beauty, and yeah. the co-working spaces. Yes, Bali does have all of this. Yeah. And those are actually all the points. Yeah. I don't know if anything's really missed. Um, but yeah, I somewhat agree with chat GPT, mm. but I mean, I haven't done a search like this for other countries. Um, and we also haven't lived in other countries, so we can't yeah. really see if it's like, you know, accurate. Yeah. But it's somewhat accurate, but I do think it paints a bit of a prettier picture. Um, I think it's very general. I yeah, think you know, general. Mo- most of the points that you, w- if you talk about like these points, you know, in terms of other countries, they might be the, you know, similar as well. Um, but Excuse what, the bike. Yeah. This but what I really feel is really that um, because people are nice here and they're very welcoming, they attract people to come here, just mm-hmm. be themselves. Yeah. No matter your nationality, no matter your, I don't know, your, uh, how you want to live your life. As long as you don't bother other people, you can really be yourself and don't, you know, get, you know, you don't even be judged by other people. And I think that's the most powerful thing. Yeah. Right. But also don't take the kindness too far. Yeah. Which um, some foreigners have done here in Bali, and we're gonna talk about it. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna talk about it because yeah. there is drama in paradise. Yeah. So we'll see you in the next video to talk about that. Yep. So see ya.